All right, so technology is being invented all the time to help people to lose weight. Most of it's garbage, but there's one device that's been around for a little while that is actually quite effective. These are CGM devices, continual glucose monitors. You put them on your arm and they measure your glucose response in real time. All right, how does this help? Well, blood sugar spikes and drops often influences our behaviors. They can make you feel irritable. They can cause cravings, energy crashes. And if you can connect these to specific foods that your body individually reacts to, it can help you create an individualized diet. So now you know why you feel particular ways throughout the day, why you get cravings, why you get energy highs and lows. And believe me, there's massive individual variances. So CGMs, this is one piece of tech that can really help you out. Yeah, yes. some actual legit insight. Finally, you can gain. Yeah, because yeah, I think I think that's the key, right? Is you you wear it, but then you have to connect it to how you feel, mm -hmm. and then you can start to connect the dots and be like, that's why I feel this. You know, two hours later after I ate this, or when I miss sleep, this is why I get those cravings. This is why I overeat, <clears throat> and it starts to help to kind of you know connect the dots on behaviors, and then you can modify those behaviors, which will then help you um, have a better relationship with food. Now that it's it's more available to consumers because before it was like prescribed yes. for yeah people with like when did diabetes. they okay we've been talking about for eight years on the show when did that happen I don't even remember when they've been they've been used for diabetics ago, I think. for longer no okay for di not I'm not talking about for diabetics I'm talking about the average person can, oh. I want to say like two three years it's, it's only been like if that it hasn't yeah. been that long no no like like okay so like NutriSense right that's a company we work with. <laughs> Um, you can sign up you, and they'll they'll set you up. They'll send you one in the mail, you wear it, and then you have, um, this is what I like about the way they do it, by the way, is you have someone on the other end that is certified to work with you on nutrition mm -hmm. who can help you connect the dots. Now, and the reason for that is because it has these tiny little needles that prick inside you, right? It's like a hair. Like you, you But I mean, that's, what, that's the reason why it had to be like, you had to go through yes, a medical doctor yes, and you couldn't just over the counter. If yeah. it wasn't for that, if that if you, they didn't have to actually penetrate your skin to be able to, to calculate this information, yeah. then we could have had this for people a long time ago. That's right. There was a regulations that made it like hard, right? To get, mm -hmm. but yeah. now it's like, it's like, again, you sign up and then boom, it's a done But deal. people won't realize the value unless you have a coach interpreting that data that's for it. you. So Otherwise, that's, what does it mean? Well, right. to me, that's one of the best parts about NutriSense that I thought was fascinating. I didn't know that. I remember when we first started talking with them, we already, we, we had been talking about the CGMs for, since the beginning of the show. So we had looked for a partner eventually when this would go to market for the average person. So that was the main thing. What I found out later after we had already partnered with them was their service, was the fact that they had somebody who was constantly on there, like watching and then- yeah, you message them, they can yeah, answer- Yeah, on a daily basis, checking up on you. They oh, I noticed you. this last mm -hmm. night. Yeah, like I, they prompted me before I even asked a question. They had saw that I had this like spike right before bed and then they prompted me like, hey, what did you eat last night before bed? Or, and then I'm like, oh, wow, this is incredible service. So I had, I, I, um, so the reason why I brought this up is I had a conversation with a family member who, this person is a, um, a, a nutritionist, like they're legit, right? They, they work with um, people with kidney issues and they help with diets. And here she is now uh, potentially pre-diabetic. Mm -hmm. And so she's asking me for advice, like, what do I do? And like, this is so strange. I don't understand what's going on. So we talked about the typical like strength training and eat protein in the morning type of deal. And I said, you know, what's weird, uh, I said, is the individual variance between person to person, how they react and respond <laughs> to different foods. Like, uh, you know, for example, somebody could eat a food that traditionally you would never guess would spike blood glucose, like an avocado. Avocado's fat, fiber, that's it. Should have no effect on blood glucose. And yet- there's rare cases where that may happen with someone. And you think, well, how's that possible? They have a low level immune response to that avocado for whatever reason. It's a food intolerance. Mm -hmm. And because of the immune response, it's a stress response. The liver pumps out glucose or glycogen and you get this spike and then this crash. You would never know this had you not worn a device that allows you to individualize kind of what's going on. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I, what was it yours, Adam? You ate one thing and another thing, and one thing gave you way worse of a spike. It was well, like tacos I know it was taco. No, the tacos were fine. Oh, tacos I ate like fine. 10 tacos, and I thought it was going to give me this massive spike, and it didn't give me a, a spike at all. And then I can't remember what I had. It was something like oatmeal. I don't remember what it was. It was. It was like, it was something, uh, what someone would consider a healthy food, right? Yeah. It was like, it was like oatmeal or a bowl of fruit or something. It was something that was light, low calorie. I mean, you're, you're, 10 tacos is a lot of tacos. <laughs> Like full size <laughs> yes. tacos, like it's a massive plate I crushed. Yeah. 
So I expected that to yeah. spike a lot more, and it wasn't even close to like the bowl of oatmeal or whatever I had. Yeah, I yeah this whole conversation around um, blood sugar and insulin, um, and there's there's obviously physiological things that we need to consider. Um, you know, you could become, uh, you could lose sensitivity to insulin, um, which isn't good. That's 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 unhealthy, can cause lots of different problems, metabolic syndrome, that kind of stuff. But what I think the more important thing to focus on is how these spikes and drops affect your behaviors because that's at the root of everything. Mm -hmm. And what you find in people when they get these high spikes, they feel weird, they feel dizzy, they don't feel good, whatever. And then these drops, irritable cravings. When you're feeling crappy in general, you're not going to, it's, it's going to be harder for you to make your decisions good. aren't quite as good. They're not going to be as good. You're going to reach for something to make you feel good in the moment, which right. probably is also going to affect your Not only that, blood it's, a, sugar it's a tool that helps you make that connection. Okay, we've been doing this for a really long time. I just told you guys two nights ago, uh, I couldn't sleep, right? I stayed up all night like yeah. working on stuff in my iPhone and notes. And so Yesterday, all day long. And this is the, someone who I, and the reason why I'm using this example is like, I would, I, I'd like to think that I'm really aware when it comes to this stuff, yet it's still slips my mind temporarily like oh shit that's why mm. yesterday i had like told katrina i'm like man this is the first day i told her i was like the cravings are ridiculous today We've, i've been dieting for three weeks now i haven't craved ice cream crap food none of that stuff of that and all day that's all I, I wanted to reach for and i'm like god why am i like that and i totally forgot i'm like oh yesterday was the night i didn't fucking sleep yeah. all night yep. long yep. and now look at where all my cravings are so like these types of tools i just think give people better insight on that. And it's not like, oh, you find out one time and then, oh, you forever will be aware of it. It's like, you'll constantly have to be kind of reminded of that, of like, oh, wow, well, how these types of things really yes. affect this behavior in me. And the more you become aware of that, the easier it's to go like, oh, okay, I can I can tough it out for the rest of this day. And then tomorrow, if I still have that feeling, and then sure I was enough. just going to say, because the two things you could take from that are, one, I'm going to be less likely to compromise sleep, or, which I think is what you just talked about, <clears throat> is you anticipate it. Oh, you know what always happens to me is I start to get these cravings. I know what's going to happen ahead of time. Here are the steps I could take to help mitigate that. Or I'm just prepared. Yeah, you know right. what this reminds me of? When I did long fasts, it was easy. When I did like 48 or 72 hour fast, which when you're doing a fast for more than 24 hours, you get like legit hunger. If I knew I was fasting, I was prepared for the cravings and it wasn't that big of a deal. If I am accidentally miss a meal and I get the cravings, <laughs> I'm not prepared and I'm more likely to reach for something really quick. So this understanding of what's about to happen does tend to set people up for a better strategy. Yeah. And so when you're monitoring your blood sugar levels and you know what's happening, like lack of sleep, for example, you miss a night of sleep, the next day your blood sugar is going to be all over the place, regardless of what you eat, in comparison to if you had not uh, missed a night of sleep. Yeah. Well, I don't remember her name, but uh, the representative we had on kind of describing this um, was talking about commonalities and, and strategies that were pretty effective in terms of like eating protein first thing in yeah. order to keep the blood sugar levels to kind of stay even throughout the day and like, you know, things like that. There's there's common strategies to apply that actually will help you to kind of mitigate a lot of those like uh, swings up and down. Well, even before we knew that, I mean, we figured this out as, as coaches and trainers. Trial and it's, error. It's why yeah. it's one of our favorite tips to give people is like before I get somebody like weighing and measuring and counting, it's like, just track your protein, eat your protein first on all your meals. And right. that seems to solve so many problems. So think of that one, you get, first of all, majority of people under consume protein on a mm -hmm. regular basis. So now you get them to bump their protein intake. Plus it helps with satiety. Plus it helps with their, their blood sugar levels. Like it has this cascading effect with very little like new effort other you than know, just like, I'm not going to tell myself I can't have that yes. food. I'm just going to say, yeah. Hey, make sure I eat my chicken breast first, or make sure I eat the steak before I go over to the carbs and stuff like that. And it makes a massive difference. Yeah, you know what makes me uh, jealous about this is we didn't have any of the stuff when we Dude. were trainers. It took us yeah. years of trial and error. How many clients I got this wrong with? I, I feel know. bad because I, I had to do it wrong so many times. We would have been so I, much better equipped. Oh my God, you yeah. imagine your first year as a trainer, CGM, you figure this out, boom, this is how many. It took me 10 years yeah. to do this the first time. Yeah, because uh, it is such an individualized whole experience uh, for everybody. It's crazy. All right, everybody. Here's today's workout program giveaway. Maps Powerlift. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it here on YouTube. Also, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, it's the final day for our Time Crunch Maps program bundle. Here's what's included. Maps 15 Minutes. 
Maps Anywhere, Maps Prime, and the ebook Eat for Performance. All of that, you get all of it in the Time Crunch bundle for $99.99. That's over $200 off. Again, it's the final day. So if you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. Anyway, along these lines, Adam, you were talking about, um, you've been reading a lot about uh, the news around Ozempic or the the, yeah. the uh, generic name. I mean, I've heard it's like sold out all over yeah. the place. I've seen, I mean, I see all the, the fitness influencers. You got one half that's pushing it, the other half that's demonizing yeah. it. Where Do you know, like, in terms of like uh, pop culture, like where... It it was mentioned first that like all of a sudden it started going gangbusters. Well, so what well, happened? It hit, a, it hit a news article first. Yeah. Right? So yeah, what happened was is that it was originally a drug for diabetics <laughs> because it helps um, manage. Which, by the way, don't most fat loss drugs? Isn't that where it gets its popularity first? A lot of them yeah. because when you when you can when you help, uh, I, I'm I'm going to go loosely here. When you help mitochondrial function, when you help the body utilize uh, glucose better, uh, stabilize insulin, become more sensitive, Control, it tends to satiety. it tends to help. Yeah, it, it tends to help. So semaglutide was used for that, and it's actually relatively effective for that. But one of the other effects of semaglutide is appetite suppression. This is where I believe most of its weight loss effects come from, because you can control all those things, but if you're still eating too much, it's gonna be hard, or you're not gonna lose weight, right? So what they found in the studies were people lost weight, like like. Consistently, 10%, 5% body weight. They would lose it every single time. So that news came out. And so it started to get prescribed off-label for weight loss. And once that hit the mainstream, forget it. All bets are off because there's a lot of people that want to lose weight and just want to take something. So here's the controversy. On one side, you have it works, medical community. It definitely works. And it's true. It does work. On the other side, you have the purists, which are like, look, you got to figure out how to eat right. You got to exercise. You got to do all this other stuff. You're trying to fix your problems with a medication is not the right way it's not to do it. The root of it, yeah. The truth is, uh, then there's us. Yeah, we there's land some, somewhere in the middle. That's right. Like yes. they're both right. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're both right. I don't know why you have to pick one or the other, uh, unless there was like a terrible, you know, side effect or whatever. But this is proving to be a very safe medication. Um, I think if you're struggling and you go and you because I think if you just take something and don't address all the root issues, yeah, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. But if you're like, I'm going to look at my diet, I'm going to try and develop a better relationship with food, I'm going to exercise, I'm going to do the right appropriate levels of exercise, and I'm going to utilize this, this medication, this peptide, to help me along the way, I think that's a very good strategy. I think that's a great strategy. Yeah, no, I think as long as you understand that the desired outcome is that I, I don't need to depend on this at one point. Totally. So I don't think either... I don't think either camp is more right or more wrong than the other, but it's like we always do. We we want to like identify with one way, and it's just like, well, it's a little, yeah, it's a little more nuanced yep. than that. You know, there's yep. I see some value in it, but then I also understand that, you know, it could be potentially a band aid for a bunch of people or what people think. Like with supplements, they just reach for the the latest pill that's going to help them in fat loss, and we know how that works. Yeah. Like yep. it, even it's if it helps too, right? I mean, it's, it's an expensive it's, product. Yeah. It's but it's, it's a, now here's the here's the controversy. On one side, you have them saying. All these people wanting to lose weight are making it, you know, creating so much demand. There's a shortage of it. Now diabetics can't get it. So uh, I, I get that. I see. I get that. But, you know, on the flip side, the way markets work, if we create enough demand, yeah. you're going so to get supply more. You're going to get more innovation, more supply, better versions uh, of these types of peptides that are even more effective. Um, and it, overall, it's going to be better for everybody. So anytime there's a high demand, the market meets it and you get better products. Well, I, what I find confusing, because you got the semi-glutide, you've got the Ozempic, you've oh. got what you, Mott C you talked about. The totally other, different. They're all different. Oh, yeah. No, so Ozempic is the is the brand name of semi-glutide. Oh, okay. So it's that's like the ibuprofen same thing. Advil. So that's the same thing. Yeah, same okay. thing. Okay. But it's a GLP-1 inhibitor, Doug, I think it's called. That's a class of drugs. There's a There's different... Uh, peptides. Now you say are, it's a class of drugs, but it's not really a drug. It's no, really sorry, it's a acid. peptide. Yeah, it's so, a peptide. Yeah, it's not a drug. So, which uh, by the way, I think there's you, there needs to be clarity around that because that the the camp that's the the purists that are like trying yeah. to shit on it is like, oh, you don't need to take drugs. This is another yeah. drug, and it's like, well, it's like a, a no, chain of amino acids. It's not really like uh, shooting up a drug. No, we did the episode we did with Doctor Seeds. He broke it down. But peptides basically were identifying signaling um, molecules that already exist in the body. <clears throat> So the body recognizes them other than, you know, different than a drug where we're creating a new new chemical and we're forcing the body to do particular actions. This we're working with how the body already signals itself. So peptides are a totally different class, tend to have less side effects, tend to be safer, tend to have 
uh, better effects over time, you know, type of deal. But there's there's this is a category. I think they're called GLP one inhibitors. Is that it? Uh, they uh, is boy GLP one receptor agonist. Agonist. Is that sorry, right? GLP one receptor agonist. So there's other um, peptides in this category where they kind of tweak them a little bit to make them you know better, worse, whatever. So and then there was controversy that some of the studies showed muscle loss. Um, now this is a muscle sparing peptide. But because well, it, it suppresses appetite, yeah, and if you you eat, eat too little, you lose muscle. Yeah, you you grossly underconsume calories and, you don't lift and or protein, and then of course, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that has nothing to do with the drug. It has everything to do with your your food intake. That's right. So, um, like anything, <clears throat> it's not a miracle. If you cut your appetite and you don't lift weights and you don't monitor and make sure you eat enough protein, yeah, you'll lose weight. You'll also lose muscle. So if you do something like this, make sure you eat adequate protein. Make sure you don't eat too little calories. Um, and lift weights. It's always like, funny to me how these things get so much traction and like buzz around them. Like, if you were to go back, tell me where where you're at with this. If you were to go back and look at it like a pie chart of what percentage of this, like, would how much will it influence or impact your fat loss? Ten percent, which is huge compared to any other thing that's ever been out there. Right, right. But it's still ten percent. Ninety percent is still everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what's so funny to me. Yeah, it's like I mean, and you're right. Ten percent is big in comparison. Ten times more than anything else. Yeah, everything else was one. Any other pill or supplement yeah, or anything else out there. So it's like, touch so that. that's why it's getting all this news. Like, oh, it is five times more effective <laughs> yeah. than the bullshit that is not yeah. effective. <laughs> so really, it's just an which is still five times right? one, which is yeah. five. <laughs> um, that's the main effect, I think, Justin. Is that it's it's that's yeah. the main yeah. reason why people are losing weight. It's is not it? like a magic fat burning. Uh, it it no. it does improve insulin sensitivity. It does work through processes that help the body um, manage glucose. It just upregulates like kind of the natural process. Yes. That help so that. there's that, but I think the main reason why people lose weight on it is it just makes them eat less, which is always what it boils down to. Yeah. It's like thermogenic supplements. You know what would be more effective? A shock collar. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, I've seen, Every time you eat something bad, it fucking Wasn't there some the gum that neck. makes things taste terrible? I guarantee terrible that would be far and, more, yeah, far there, more. What? There was, that gum that There was like some taste. gum that made everything yeah, taste No, like they shit. came after us like four or five years ago. I thought it was actually kind I was of, like, I thought eat it was, the gum and then taste it made, yeah, psychologically. It made, taste, it made like uh, sugar. It wasn't it was, comfortable with that. It was designed to, if you, you, you chewed the gum, I forgot what was in the gum, <laughs> but then you would eat anything that had sugar in it and would like, whatever it did, it mixed it with that sugar and it would just make you want to throw up. It was nasty. Yeah. That's, you know, so you build all these associations with that. Yeah, <laughs> hey, kind of smart. You know what that reminds me of? Do you guys ever do this when you were kids? You brush your teeth and go out and have breakfast with orange, orange juice. juice. Oh, orange uh -huh. juice and toothpaste yeah. has to be like the worst oh, combo yeah. ever. Yeah. Like, what happened? Yeah. And milk. Yeah. Coffee milk, would be, milk coffee's up there too. You know, a good way to ruin your morning coffee is to brush your teeth right before. Oh, does it really mess yeah. up the coffee? Yeah, oh yeah. You brush your teeth and you have your cup of coffee. It just doesn't. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know that. I don't drink coffee like you guys. All right, yeah. I got something that blew my mind. Blew my mind. I can't believe this is real. I can't believe this is real. <laughs> I doubt it. You, no. Dude, you've been oh, hyping shit. this. I'm going to be so mad when Bro, I Bro, so Sam Parr talked about, I love that guy, by the way. His, uh, He's freaking rad, right? Shout out his, great um, content. His, um, his podcast. I think it's My First Million. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. I listen okay. to it. I like their stuff. So did you guys know, and this is real. Did you yeah. guys know you can hire a private company? There's an Israeli company that you can hire. The CEO has a LinkedIn and everything. It's legit. And they will do psyops for you. What? 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 Yeah. What do you mean? You can what hire kind of psyops? like legit like agency. Yeah, bro. Psyop. I'll give you an example. Show that. One of the jobs that they actually did. Somebody hired them to mess to to mess with their competitor. Here's what they did. They sent a sex toy to the guy's house yeah. so that the wife would open it. Wow. And it came from a woman. They created a fake profile of oh. this woman. You could look up credit card. That was fake. So you could literally connect it all to this fake woman. They followed this guy around and they confirmed. How is this legal? And confirmed that the guy slept in his office for the next two nights. So like it worked. His wife kicked him out of the house. We totally messed up. Shut up. One example. That's one example. So if you could literally hire this company to psyop. How is that legal? I don't know. It's an Israeli company and you can hire them. He talked about it. Wow. You pay the, you know what the cost is? One to $10 million. Oh shit. Wow. One to $10 million. And they will do this. They'll hire, they have like special. I'll do it for half that. <laughs> <laughs> Start on a business right now. One, that's a lot of money, bro. It is. To send a fucking dildo. It, it, but I mean, hold I mean, on. That's a, if you want to yeah. ruin somebody's life. Yes. But, that's sort of the But the these are like direction. Ex, these are like ex like spies, ex like military. Wow. Like think about it. Like imagine if this happened to you and you don't know. You're like, honey, I don't know what that is. 
And she's like, really? Oh, let's look it up. And there's a profile. The and then she looks it up. Black ops oh, but there's huh? DMs going back and forth between you guys. Like they could create all the evidence. Wow. And then you can't, you look like an asshole. That's what they Isn't do. Isn't that funny? And then and then people still want to pin just conspiracy theory to like what's happening. Like, oh, you say PSYOP and they immediately put a tinfoil hat on you. I know. And you're like, this is for hire. Bro. For consumers. Dude, wow. how scary is That's that? That's insane. Right? Is that the scariest thing you've ever heard in your life? Yeah. So literally, if, if you were a target, somebody could hire a company like this and ruin your entire life and you wouldn't know what's going on. Dude. You would have no idea what's going Imagine on. Imagine how fucked up that is if you were like... You know, you're just a good, good CEO who's built a company. You're a good worth, guy. Yeah, yeah. And then the up and coming competitors. You know what? You know what would run through my mind? First of all, I'd be like, "What's going on?" I, I, you know, no, honey, this is like. And then I would think, did I lose my mind? Is it like, did I? That's do what, I have an alternate personality? <laughs> like, what's happening? Like, this is crazy, <laughs> dude. That's wild. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So they, they, so you can literally hire them to. I mean, the, the applications are just endless, <laughs> endless with something like this. Oh, man, my brain's going to short circuit. Yeah. Now, what makes me, what's crazy about this is if this is a legal company, you know that there's been companies that have been around doing this for a long time. Exactly. Sure. Well, cor many... corporate espionage has been a thing forever yeah. to begin with, right? Imagine that, like, you know, your big competitors, like, just what, what was that one case? Remember where um, they were, like, messing uh, doing a bunch of blackmail to another company's um, CEO and like like at, like they were sending all this crazy shit to his front door. Oh, I don't know. Oh, oh I forget the article for that, but there was there was examples of that, and it was just dirty stuff, like yeah. to to sabotage like their competitor and and get him in basically trouble with his with his home life as well. So That's I mean, terrible. There's been examples of that already at that so, level. Back in the day when I would uh, manage gyms and at one point I owned, I was like part owner. I was ruthless with my competitors. I never lied. I never did something like this, <laughs> yeah. but I was ruthless. At one point I had this gym <laughs> that I, I was part owner of and our main competitor. You're just sending people pig's heads. And, no, not you know. like that. Like some Italian. Is that <laughs> like a psycho. Racist joke? Is that what you're trying to make? What? Yeah. A horse's head? Yeah, horse's oh. head. Did you ever watch Godfather? Yeah. Uh, that was an accident. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, See, so. that, was, that was a uh, Freudian <laughs> slip or something. No, so yeah. I was ruthless. So what I did was, is this gym was our competitor. So I knew our gym was much better. I knew what our margins were. I knew how much we could lose and, <clears throat> and afford to lose. So we had a pool. We had rock climbing. We had way better equipment. They were just a gym. So I literally, I, I started out by sending staff there to buy membership to see who the best, most popular group X class uh, instructors were. Then they told me who they were. Then mm -hmm. I approached them and offered them $10 more an hour to come work for me, knowing that they would bring half their members. This is what yeah. happens. Poaching. When, it's when, a, yeah. when you lose a that's group good, X person. That's good business. Hold on. It gets, I get better. Yeah. So I did that. I, I, I took two of their instructors and that right away took a bunch of people. Then I flyered their parking lot and I said, bring your membership card in and bring evidence of how much you're paying per month. We'll charge you $10 less a month and you can work out at our gym. Nothing to join. And I, I decimated. Oh, to the point where there, where we were, I was in the, I was in the front area, like you know, doing, you know, working or whatever. The the manager of the gym walked through the door with garbage bags, like I'm like, uh oh, we're gonna get a fight, and he dumped the flyers all over the floor, which of course I went right back and <laughs> oh my God. did it again, yeah, ruthless. But I never did anything like this. Later so, on, yeah, you now find you can just out steal somebody's divorce, identity. and he lost his two kids in the divorce. So, I was a yeah. kid, dude. I was like, I was like 20 know? years old. I was yeah. stupid. I know what an asshole. I feel like no, there's a part part of that's good business. I mean, honestly, to go poach an employee and pay the employee more money because you see the value in what they bring, and that's your bad. Sure, that's your bad for not recognizing that those instructors yeah. have a cult like following to them and should be well taken care. If they were well taken care of, they wouldn't. I mean, that's how I to, rationalize it too, Adam. I mean, that's <laughs> hey, that's the truth though. I mean, that's uh, I mean, that's why it's so important to take care of your people that's because true. it. And here's the thing too: take care of it doesn't always necessarily pay them more, right? Because I understand what it's like to operate a business and you can't afford to pay maybe your instructor $10, 20 dollars more. An hour. No, but you build loyalty. But you build loyalty. Yeah. I mean, I I had opportunities my entire career to go jump ship to competitors. And the reason why I never did was because it was it wasn't a significant increase enough for me to leave an environment that I already really liked. I yeah. loved my environment. I liked who I worked for. Yeah, I liked the place. Point. And so my mind was like, you'd have to pay me two or three x for me to to leave something like that. It's not I wouldn't jump ship for ten more dollars an hour. If you jump ship for ten dollars more an hour, you're not you're looking for a reason. That's right. Yeah, you're, mm -hmm. yeah, you're you're quitting that place anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah no, that's so true, bad. dude. We have to talk about Genghis Khan. Last time we didn't talk about it. You had all these like stats and <sighs> facts to bring up. I've just been fascinated with the fact that like 
H- how much was it like? I'm gonna. I'll bring okay, it up. Okay, just please, please mention the stats. So did again, you guys? Mind blowing. So you guys know Genghis Khan, who he was, right? Conqueror at one point. I think his empire, I think, was the largest in all yeah. of history. If I'm not mistaken, maybe Doug can confirm that. Yeah. Um. They, you know, revolution- his, his numbers versus Wilt Chamberlain. Let's like. Oh, you're talking about that? Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah. Um. But you know, revolutionary, um, war general. The way that they, um, you know, would wage war was very different from other. Uh, people at the time, it was very effective. They were fast. Uh, they, you know, expert arch, uh, archman, you know, archery on horseback, and they survived off of their horses, milk, yeah. blood, and meat. This is all they ate, by the yeah. way. So everybody else was eating rice, and like, and he, they just were coming in with, yeah, that was a thing. It was cheese, and it was yeah, meat, cheese, and, meat, and, and and milk. Yeah, and they they were significantly stronger than everybody else. Yeah, it it was the largest empire to ever exist, going from the entire Asian continent. From Pacific Ocean to modern day Hungary. I mean, huge. Yeah. Huge. And this was like, uh, it was from 1162 to 1227. So um, interesting. Anyway, the other thing about Genghis Khan is he impregnated a lot of people, a <laughs> lot of people. Uh, yeah, that's an understatement. Okay. Yeah. I, do you know what they've, they've done DNA tests? And according to estimates, these are like based off of DNA, um, one in every 200 people on earth. One out of every 200 people can trace their genetics to Genghis Khan. On wow. Earth. That's crazy. So how many people did he get pregnant? What does that look like? Yeah. Is, that, is he like 10 it, people a day? Like, exactly. It has to be like a daily event. And then, like, where does he get this anger? You know? <laughs> like, the guy is obviously satisfied. And he's going around and just conquering. Unless he's some sort of a masochist where that's like gets him off, right? Going and killing and blood and war. And then he wants to have sex right after. Bro, he's right? just like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, just yeah. all day long. It's, that's, that's crazy. So if you, do like a, if you do like a 23andMe, will it trace all the way back that far? Does it go that far back? I don't know if 23andMe will do it. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Have none of you guys done that? Have you ever I did. Done? I have oh, you it. did? Yeah, I did. You don't remember? I'm a little weird it doesn't about say anything, like, it doesn't say anything data like, like that. It doesn't say that? Yeah. <laughs> so how do, we, how do they know that then? They have to, they, they specifically do tests for, you're right. I don't know, Adam. Don't yeah. do this whole science is fake thing. Please. <laughs> uh, here we go. Dinosaur. You hate when I blow up your shit like that. It's just like, doesn't scratch your head. You go like, makes sense. Is carbon okay, dating. Do I want to do the 23 and me <laughs> test or do I want to do the Genghis Khan test? I'll, you know I'll what? order both. I'll just do both of them. You just brought up a brilliant business idea. What if they did genetics testing? They don't tell you like, nationality, race, whatever. They tell you famous people you may be yeah you know what i mean you may be connected yeah, to yeah. that's yes. it yeah. yeah yes oh looks like you're really bad idea you know, like jack the, the ripper the, the kevin the like kevin bacon of of 23 and me you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? He's like, oh do you guys have any because I, I know for me and my one claim is that uh you know uh tombstone uh yeah so tombstone pizzas no the, the <laughs> i'm just kidding yes. i'm just kidding <laughs> i ate a lot of those in college did you really I know exactly what you're talking about no it was the the clanton gang so i'm, I'm related to like the, the bad guys. the red sashes the dumb the idiots. cowboys yes, the cowboy guys oh, really wow. uh-huh. of course you are yeah they're like totally portrayed as these dumb assholes you know what I mean? it's like dude <laughs> they were an organized gang probably accurate dumb. but still yeah. like you know <laughs> yeah, that sucks that's hilarious yeah i did you guys have never done those 23 no years? i haven't i did it doug I'm was mad at me because i used my name He's like, you should put a fake name because he thinks that they'll use your DNA to. Well, they do. That's that's the worry, Doug. They'll they'll sell it. If you use a fake name, then now anybody else going forward that's connected to you, they don't know. They don't know know. who you are. Yeah. Why 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 would you really want for everybody else there? Yeah, sure. Why would you want to use a a fake name? I don't know. I just don't want my DNA out there. I don't know. You know how undercover Doug is. (laughs) I'm super undercover. (laughs) And by the way, Genghis Khan possibly had thousands of children. Thousands? He had like his official children, like four children, but I mean, like he, his own. He spread his seed far right. and wide. Uh, wow. So he shared his DNA, Doug. See, Look yeah, yeah, Left yeah, a yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a I mean, gift. there's people who have had uh, a lot of kids. There's one guy who had 888 children. Who's what? that? His name what? was Ismail Ibn Sharif. Another guy named Bertold Wisner had 600 children. Dang. And Anybody over here? Yeah. Now, uh, uh, nobody's going to break those numbers. Augustus, <laughs> Augustus II, the strong, had between 365 the and strong. 382, like one a day. The you strong. Know? Way, to, way to increase your odds, make sure one of your kids like turns out like to be a stud. You Just know? have a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah. Now, here's the deal. There's a big difference between having kids and raising kids. There's no way they raise all those kids. Oh, they didn't raise I have yeah. four of kids. Not. I'm, I'm almost <laughs> dead right now. Yeah. There's no it's way like, oh, I could have that would uh, immediately you know, kill you. 100 kids. I would kill myself. <laughs> Just the see. stress of waking up. Like, ah, yeah. oh, no. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. So we had how many thousands? It says possibly thousands. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's fine. So you have to, first off, 
That's a lot of sex because you're not getting every woman pregnant every yeah. time you have sex with her. So well, maybe one. he is. He's pretty no, well, powerful no, guy. Way. You're well, not yeah, getting like, pretty like you're you're when she's ovulating. And, you're not batting yeah. a thousand. I know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. Number two, he has to have like some potent, like he has to have real high amounts of sperm. Yeah. Because uh, I mean, that's, he ate a lot of cheese. <laughs> that, see, what was there. the article that Jackie sent about Justin cheese? Brought it up. Oh, what was that? It was. Um, I don't even read those. I don't anymore. even remember. What? Oh, Justin, it's, I know. I read it. You're the cheese guy. Shame like, on you, dude. Star Wars cheese. That's it was a, I expect old, you to know everything about those two things. It was something about like how they aged the cheese. I, I have no. I have no idea. I get sent like cheese articles every day. Like, he yeah. does. Just, dude. just literally about like the health benefits or the negative or that it's like heroin. Yeah. You know, like. They they associate like the addictive qualities. Of you know what's it. funny? Yeah. I got I got to be honest on this podcast right now. We Justin likes cheese like a normal person. <laughs> yeah, I know he doesn't really have it's no, not that. No, it's not. I'm not that obsessed. We made up. We we really pushed the obsession. I disagree with that. The uh, cheese drawer at the house. That's right. Definitely. Yeah, okay. but, yeah but you there go back. A, you go back and it's still in there. It's, there is a, like I like eat the whole. There's thing. a one in. There's a one in three chance that at all times you could check his pockets and he. <laughs> <laughs> That is not, that's no. not, hey, bro, that is not normal. There's been many times we're like going over the air, going to, and I'll I see tell you, Justin, I'll tell you where the I see Justin from. do this. Yeah. <laughs> and it's cheese, bro. My dad, that, my dad used to hide it from me, dude. So that was like part of it, right? I like, like I like cheese. I yeah, like cheese. Yeah. And, and I used to like have string cheese I bring to school like every day and everybody would try and steal it for some reason. Like it was like more of a commodity than uh, any kind of like treat or anything. I would always like... Oh, dude, yeah, where's the street guys, cheese? Did you, you guys see that? Steal from me. So it's a childhood thing, then. Yeah. You know, Justin, course, you ever watch, you know when you play video games? I like hoard it. You know when you play video games and someone gets run over and like coins come out or whatever? Yeah, Justin cheese. was over here running the other day. He fell down. Cheese came cheese out. Cheese came out. Cheese all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> you guys see yeah. uh, the, the Lunchables in schools? That's, yeah. They, got, they made like some partnership or whatever like that? Oh, God. Jesus Christ. That's that's who we're partnering with? Yeah, for, Lunchables uh, is going to provide healthy cafeterias. And by the way, I looked up, they they're modifying their Lunchables to to be healthier. So what do you guys think? What does that look like? More grains, oh, yeah. more plant-based. Plant-based, yeah. so more processed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are they going to do like fake meat in there? I don't know. I, I hope oh. not. Not, not. We took out the turkey. We took out the whole food uh, I, options. I know. But I mean, this look, look, here's the deal. It's a, it's a freaking racket, dude. It's a racket. And yeah. these companies are owned by these large corporations that have massive, massive influence over our policy. So when you're looking at a, a school policy, which is like a monopoly, right? So they make a decision. It's like they're going to purchase millions of dollars worth of stuff. Lobbies come in, and it's the biggest, smartest company that's going to come in and get that deal. Now, to, the, to be fair, the big companies have the ability to distribute and produce. So I get that part. Yeah. But... Yeah, they can scale and. and but do you think demand. that public so would, schools? Hey, so would anybody else who got the billion dollar contract? I mean, that's <laughs> well, to you ask the small startup who's I mean, trying to get. Hey, if we infused a billion dollars into your company, you think maybe you could get these uh, out to all these schools? Yeah. And you, you know what? You know what, bro? <laughs> hey, you're probably right. I bet you. I bet you. I don't even know this, but I bet you they're spending twice as much on a lunchable if you get the, at the grocery of store. Of course, yeah. of course. Like, Come on, like dude. You know, each child, fifty dollars for a lunchable, you know, or something crazy <laughs> yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, it's just real nice. Oh God, that's insane. Hey, that's Doug, you really put uh, celery's making you fat in the notes. You thought I was serious, huh? I, I just, thought you were serious. No, too. I was just kidding. Oh, we sorry. were talking about titles for things. I was like actually that. curious oh. about that angle. Yeah, I was yeah. so excited. I looked up there. I was like, celery's not making you. fat. All right, well, this one's not fake. Justin brought this one up. It was the Venezuelan poodle moth. Yeah. What is that? Okay, so I was going down this rabbit hole um, and I was looking at uh, just weird animals because I, Cause you I do guess that. I have some weird is that what you, obsession. Is that what you put in the Google? Yeah. <laughs> weird <laughs> animals? Somebody asked me like what my spirit animal was and I was like trying to be like cheeky and, and oh, couldn't okay. find like a, a really like like undiscovered weird animal and so <clears throat> I found like a blobfish. Have you ever seen a blobfish? Yeah. What it looks like? My Dude. daughter's infatuated with them. They're weird. Is that the one so where great. someone it's asked like you like yesterday about face. your spirit animal yeah. and yeah. you posted it? It's like, mm, it looks like that. Like, mm. yeah, yeah, it's like a, yeah, it's like an old man with like big lips it looks like almost. Uh, but anyway, so there was the Venezuelan uh, poodle moth, and it has like these. It actually looks like it has fur, like a poodle, and it's like big. and And I was just 
Oh my God. Imagine. Holy shit, that's huge. That thing just flying on you. I would freak the hell out. It looks like an alien. Where, that's a big where, ass where are, moth. Where are, the, whoa, where are those? Justin? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I would guess oh, Venezuela. Oh, Adam. Sorry, I didn't. I, I, <laughs> I shouldn't have helped him there. I missed that. The part. Venezuelan poodle <laughs> moth. Where are those where, from? Yeah, Where is that? Is it Africa? <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> I mean, look how alien that looks. That it looks weird. Me out. You know what that looks almost like? Uh, what's that movie? It was a Disney movie uh, based out of Hawaii with the alien. Lilo. Oh, yeah, yeah. Looks like oh, Lilo, Lilo and Stitch. Oh, yeah. Stitch. It kind of looks like Stitch without the wings. Yeah. Doesn't it? It does. There was another cool one. I think it was it was called like a panda ant, I think. But it, What do they eat? It, they it eat? looks like a panda, but, it, it, but basically it's a wasp that doesn't have wings. Ugh. And it's, Weird. yeah, it's it's just. Hold on. What what do moths normally eat? Don't they eat clothes? Um, really? well, they will eat I your mean, clothes. Yeah, yeah. Some of them will anyway. Yeah. Fabric. So that thing's so big, if you you wouldn't want to kill it, right? It's kind of too big. I don't know. Is it just zoomed in so it's actually really no, small? No, did you see the person's hand? No, no, scroll down, scroll down. You could have a little tiny hand. Imagine having hand. one as a little pet. I, guess. I don't care how small your hands are. That's no, a big-ass moth. No, no, you're right. That's big. It looks like a dog with wings. It's it's so weird. Yeah, that's that would freak me out a little yeah. bit. That's kind of cute, though, a little bit too, right? Yeah. It's a little cute. What do they eat? They Can you find out popular. what they eat for me? I don't know what they eat. I'm just always like fascinated. There's these animals out there I've never even seen or heard of, or yeah. in, in you're just like uh, Andrew. Did you find out their food? Now, this website's saying it's plants, but they're not sure it's plants. With a question mark. What's that? That's weird. Oh, Sometimes it's kibble. They're guessing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plants. I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Maybe it eats people. human flesh. Yeah. yeah. Did you? I don't remember what I was listening to, but there was a podcast where someone was trying to describe the Amazon jungle, mm. and they said that. It's so loud. The insects yeah. are so loud. They said, think of the loudest street in Manhattan, and it's louder than that. Well, isn't it? Is it the Amazon? From all the bugs. Isn't the True. Amazon jungle? There's, there's, I think it's the Amazon jungle. It has like more species in there and then the entire world in that concentrated. Oh, the variety? Yeah. There, we've only discovered, I don't remember the number, but it's a small number. We only are aware of and have discovered a fraction of the life of the plants and the animals. Well, I know. I think I brought that mm -hmm. up before where I think what every day we find like seven or something mm -hmm. like that, like new. That's wild. Which is also kind of weird to me when we like get like real crazy about something going extinct. Like mm -hmm. that, like an like, don't worry, there's a lot more other things. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, undiscovered species. That, yeah, I know like, there's the people that freak out when that, about that stuff. Yeah, Madagascar is like that. Too. Okay, so today at least 40,000 plant species, 427 mammals, 1,300 birds. 378 reptiles and more than 400 amphibians and around 3,000 freshwater fishes have been found in the Amazon so far, but that's uh, not even close to, I guess, all of them. Yeah, it's super dense with life. Yeah, it's, that's wild. Yeah, that's how, do you, how do you get to this? Like, you're, you're, take, walk me through this. You're on your phone. It's like eight o'clock at night. You're high. Are you high? Is that what causes this? High. You're not no, even high. You're I'm sober. I'm curious. Okay, yeah, you're it, sober and you're just like, you know what? I'm going to look up. My brain's different than your guys. Obviously. Yeah. That's why I'm trying to wrap yeah. my brain yeah, around yeah, how yeah, it works here. Yeah, you do have a weird brain. Business and then like studies and I'm, yeah, I'm not there. I do weird. <laughs> yeah, but I look at weird stuff too. <laughs> just, yeah. I just don't share it with you guys. So uh, um, Venezuela, speaking of sense. Venezuela, do you know that Venezuela had the most effective diet ever, ever? On accident? Did you guys hear about this? <laughs> what? Okay. In, oh, why? Is a dad joke coming? Starving? No, it's actually quite sad, but it's true. Uh, in 2017, <clears throat> the average person in Venezuela lost over 24 pounds. Some flu went through there. No, no it's called bro. socialism. It's called socialism. Oh, oh they God. were so. This is <laughs> true. Yeah. They called it the Venezuelan diet. She People were losing weight coming. like crazy, and in 2017, they tracked it and they did. <clears throat> it's like over 20 average person. Over twenty four pounds because well the sad food is hard to come by. Well, okay, people, so ninety percent. That's, that's an average because like people up. that are probably super poor freaking lost all kinds yeah, of weight. Yeah. So well, well, over ninety percent of the people there live in poverty because of it. Yeah, and that's crazy. Yeah, it's so sad. If you think about it, there was a, a comedian that did a whole bit about this about um, how people make fun of Americans because we're fat, and he goes, "Yeah, we are." And he's like. Think about it. Like we have so much food, we die from it. And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. Like it's we've done such a good abundance. <laughs> yeah, we've done such a good job of solving hunger. We went the opposite direction. Yeah. But crazy, crazy sad to think about. But the average person lost twenty four pounds because they didn't have access to to food. Yeah. yeah. Justin, tell me your tell me your son's lucky number thing. I want to hear that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So um Basically, he came up with this formula, and I don't know if like he thought of. I think he thought of it himself, but he thought that like everybody used it, and it was like your lucky number. So he was trying to come up with your lucky number is basically what you can count to without losing your breath. 
So you keep counting until you have to take a breath. Until you have to take a breath, and then that's your lucky number that you roll with. And, and what, so I'm like, what, what was yours? Did you get Did you get yours? Already? I I was like uh, sixty three or something. Wow, what? that's not bad. Yeah. Oh, but you're counting fast. Though. Yeah, it's fast. Oh, one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, like twelve. That. Yeah. Oh, okay. Who could hold the breath the longest in here? By the way, do you think you're a good swimmer? Yeah. Do you think you could beat me? Yeah, I do. Really? I'm pretty, yeah, I'm pretty confident. In that. I can hold my breath a long I, time. When I was a kid, we used to like see how many times back and forth on the pool that we could go. And I like that every summer that was like the thing was like, I can now get up to two, then I can get up to three, then I can get well, up to Well, I know four. you swim fast. That's for sure. I've seen you swim. <clears throat> I don't know. When was the last time we told this story? We went to, we were at a pool. Yeah. I don't know why we were at a pool. Why were we at a pool? We were Are helping we? the club one with their- Yeah, there was right. some club party. Sport. Club sport. Yeah. Kick off of a gym. Yeah. So we go to this pool and we're all hanging out. And this is when you were like peak- oh. Body physique competitor. Yeah, like 240. Yeah, big, like big, you know, not like an ideal swimming body. You were, <laughs> no, you were like a rock. Not, probably the worst swimming body you could have. And there were these two dudes there that were like D1. Non well, I didn't know that though first. No, no, no. I'm going to tell a story though. Yeah, I didn't so know that. So there's these two dudes there that tall guys, they were tall like you. Yeah. And they wanted to race in the pool or something like that. Yeah. And Adam's like, I'll jump in and race you guys. And, mm -hmm. and it, you... I mean, they beat you, but not by much. Yeah, it was close. It was close. It was me, Craig, and then the two guys. Yeah, well, Craig was Craig, Craig got, got dusted. Dude, he was, he was <laughs> I knew better, dude. I sink. I'm, I'm not a swimmer. Yeah, yeah I'm, forget yeah. it. I'll panic. So, so you did it. You got so. You, they were, I mean, you got close to them. Yeah. And they come out of the water, and they're like, "Oh man, like you did really good. Like, where did you swim?" And you're like, "I didn't." Yeah. They were D1 swimmers. Yeah, yeah. That was. I. I didn't know going in it. I would remember we had been drinking, and I was talking. <laughs> oh, yeah, you were I was talking shit amongst you guys. That's right. And talking shit to Craig and stuff like that. This happened, yeah. And then there was two guys that were like at the cabana next over that were like getting in and like they were calling their buddies out racing. I'm like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll race. And Craig's like, well, let's go. And then we did it all formally. Then, and they, and, I, and I had told you guys, like, I've never been beaten a pool. I, yeah. Up in that point, I hadn't been beaten a pool. I'm like, everybody I've like right now, I've never raced legitimately. Yeah, so, you, didn't, you weren't. You're not, yeah, so I. You I, never were in a, a race team. Yeah, right? yeah. So I get beat and I'm like, oh, fuck, right? So much for that. How they, sad you know, does that make you that you totally missed your athletic yeah. calling? It makes me mad at my parents. You didn't even have that <laughs> flip. <laughs> you know, would be more mad at my parents. You like, could, he, he didn't. He didn't no, have the flip. That's he didn't why he have lost. The flip. Like they oh, yeah. had all by the, the way, technique. That's when they got you. You yeah. know that, right? Yeah, yeah. You were neck to, and neck. Yeah, to the to the. You first, just don't know how to do the. No, the I, expert I, have, flip. I have a terrible technique, especially when I was all big and bulky. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you so bro. Do you ever think about this? That you I do. Been, I think about it all the time. That I've been a famous athlete. You just played the wrong sport. No, I absolutely think that I I messed up by not my not doing. I mean. We know so much more today, like about um, body types for sports yeah. and things like that, that like I for sure, and I'm sure you guys even look, or at least I do, I look at my kid and I'm like, I'm looking already like how he's shaping up. And yeah. I'm sure that when he starts to develop that, you know, I will encourage him towards a sport that is like his makes sense for his body type. There's, a, I think that's how it happens as a kid too. Like sometimes you just get lucky, mm -hmm. you fall into the sport that you probably were built for. And then you naturally, like, you know, I think- Every kid who wins at something ends up liking that. Yeah, you know, and I think that's kind of how it happens, yeah, right? When, when you're, you're like good at something, it's yeah, like, yeah, you're like you're six years old. You all go down to the park. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody has real experience. Yeah. You guys just say, "Let's play basketball," and all of a sudden, like you're hella good. It's like now you. Fall. I like this. Yeah, I yeah. like this. You like it because you were good at it naturally, and then you develop that over time. You so. know what's crazy about that? Besides the fact that you co totally could have been a professional athlete or one of the best in the world, unfortunately, you yeah. missed your calling. Kind of <laughs> sad, you're, you're, but I'm not sad about it because here we are. <laughs> <laughs> You know, he would have never done this with us, Justin. But yeah. here's here's the crazy thing about this is they're now Hindsight, showing you know? they're now showing in studies clearly that young kids do better at a specific sport when they play a lot of different sports when they're young. Yeah. So the the old wisdom was if you want your kid to be a great soccer player, you have them play soccer when they're young, focus on soccer. That's all they play all yeah. the way up until they get yeah, to college. Specialize all early. What they're showing now is the kid that plays soccer, baseball, basketball, swimming track mm -hmm. as a little kid and then when they get up into like high school-ish then they start to specialize they do better at this their sport had they because they did so many different sports well remember yeah, because all the variables like yep. it, and that's the thing is you don't get exposed to all these other variables of movement uh when you're just specializing that early and plus like the the overuse injury like for specific sports especially like baseball something yeah. like that we get into early and we you know, I mean, you only have so many throws, especially if you're a pitcher. So, yep. um, yeah, that's why, I mean, my kids are in gymnastics. Like they're going to go into something else. The greatest like, foundation, by the way. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. It's just like, it's purely just focus on proprioception and control and body awareness. And then they can specialize yep. later. 
That's it. Man. Yeah. And if you strong. can take it, like I, I can't help. But I love. I'm watching your boys already. The way they can control their body in space already. Was was but, Courtney an athlete? You know, she it, she's funny because she was an athlete and she's got like really like she looks like skills. She was, she was like into volleyball and all that, but like the competitiveness was like she just. She could just quit, you know, like because she didn't like uh, any of the politics stuff and just mm. was like, ah, whatever, I'm out. Like, wasn't even like, didn't even give it a thought. So she just looks at it different than mm. I do. Are your wives competitive? Are your wife, are, are they competitive? Um, Jessica's not. She's competitive very with herself, but not with other people. But with herself, she's very competitive. Mm. So she would, she would have been good for individual type sports. Well, not, she did the, like the, the, whatchamacallit. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> what, what are, is Courtney competitive just, at all or is it just you guys? Oh uh, yeah, no. Like I'm, I'm definitely very much more competitive uh, than, than she is. But she's, she's definitely athletically gifted. I think that's what's frustrating for yeah. me because, like, I'm always trying to get her to do something like active, and like we're actually trying to find something together, like maybe even tennis or something. So yeah. it's like we can have something active to do together, and like, and so like I'm like kind of pulling her in that direction, but she's just not necessarily like motivated mm -hmm. like that but your kids got the i'm they gonna got ask the, you because your kids yeah. obviously got the 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 sports gene yeah it's there like yeah it's really gonna be there. interesting to watch max because he's not he doesn't seem to be that way right now i mean obviously he's only four years old or going on four years old katrina is extremely competitive and so am i so yeah. like we're both like super super competitive so to think that maybe he doesn't get that would be really weird but yeah, he doesn't seem like it right he's, now. He's got a lot of time, dude. Yeah, right. I mean, It'll it's come. it's yeah. still really early right yeah. now. We're not uh, we're, we haven't got any interest right now. But I mean, I can't help but you watch like all these these like documentaries on these super athletes. <laughs> yeah, but that's the super <laughs> athlete. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's, I know, bro. It, that's Always, why it's dude. like the one percent. I do. 1%, you know, dude, I'm so like weird like this too. I like I leave like like trails of like <laughs> the golf club like laying in the like in there just. No, you don't, in. Bro. Yes, I do, bro. Hey, I do. Put, you the, play, put the put the football in his in his. He plays crib. a little basketball hoop on his way oh, bro, to like the, the trash. He plays sub sub subliminal music like music Always. while he's sleeping. Always, dude. <laughs> you leave basketball best. running on the yeah. TV all the time. Like, I mean, he's like at least like aware of it. Like, it's really cute. Like, so we last night we were hanging out before bath time and stuff like that. And the Warriors were playing, so I was like all in, in 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 the game, and he wanted me to take a bath with him. And I'm like, no, no, Daddy's watching the game. Oh, put it in the TV in the in the bath. And so he, he gets Katrina to put the TV in there to get me to come up there, and then puts the basketball oh, game. Oh, for up. you? Yeah, yeah. So oh, I can, he's smart. You're yeah, yeah, smart as shit. No, he's definitely a, he's, he's he understands it. Yeah, no, he's definitely smart. Yeah, my sure. my daughter, my well, because I have the two younger ones, so I don't know yet. But my older daughter is the she's the ambitious one. She's like ultra Com super, yeah, to the point where I I, I am very careful with like. Like I've told you guys, like they'll have a contest at school. They just won contest mm -hmm. uh, for who, how, how far they could get. It was like this math program. The kid that got the furthest won. I don't remember. It was like a sticker. It was. Like, it wasn't a big deal. It was like some prize. I pick her up from school. She's like, "Go straight home." I'm like, "What? We got to stop by the grocery store." No, go straight home. I got to win this thing. We go home, <laughs> and she goes nuts. It's awesome. The next day, I'm like, "Did you win?" She's like, "Yeah, I got first place." I'm like, "How far did you get?" She's like, "I got to like I don't remember what it was like page 63." So I'm like, "What was second place? 12." I'm like, honey, <laughs> you don't have to win by that. Much. Oh, I would love that. I would <laughs> love awesome. that. You couldn't have got 80? No, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> She'll go too hard, dude. She'll stress herself out. I got to pull her back, you know? That's awesome. Anyway. Yeah, well, to, dude, so I, I brought that up with uh, Ethan when we were first kind of playing soccer and all that. And, like, he was, like, going through it. He was the kid that was, like, out there you know, watching uh, butterflies and, and was grabbing grass and like throwing it I feel up, like, like Max in the middle like of the game. <laughs> I was losing my mind. <laughs> and I was like, this is not what I was anticipating. Like, yeah. this is not the vision I was <laughs> seeing, you know, my well, look at him now, though. sports. Exactly. So that's what I'm trying yeah. to give you a little. No, you are giving me a Because I, I, that, I totally picture now. Max like that. Yeah. Like, because we're going to put him in probably like soccer or something this summer or whatever. And I'm like, dude, I know it's going to happen. I'm going to put him in there. He's going to be like, Playing like you know Pokemon yeah. games with yeah. his hands. He just wanted good. he wanted to fight with sticks, yeah. and you yeah. know he's like, probably yeah. gonna he's probably gonna want to hug the kids and make friends with them and stuff like that. Oh, you know dude. what though? The thing when you love your kids so much, then you start to see their their proclivities, and you can't help but love you know love what they do. Oh, yeah, yeah, I get. That. I, I love the quirky stuff for sure. Like, yeah, so it's like fun. like my oldest, see, you know, he he got into robotics. Like I, mean, I don't give a shit about. I'm sitting there in these robotics tournaments and all these tech dads, like they're super smart. Like, and I'm like, nah, I don't know any of this stuff. But I'm like totally got into it because it was my kid, you know. Yeah. 
So, yeah. So anyway, we got a shout out, Justin. You mentioned somebody that you want. Yeah. To, so this sounds like a great page. What oh yeah, Legion, no, it's great. Like Legion dad first. jokes. Like so, he does like tweets and also posts them on Instagram, and they're mm. just always hilarious and fire. So dad, dad says, says jokes, jokes. Yeah. And they're all a bunch of jokes. They're hilarious. Speaking of dad stuff, I want to ask you this, Justin. You were the guy that skipped breakfast every single day. Now you eat it consistently. Yeah. What have you noticed? What are you eating? What's going on? Yeah, so I try, I mean, if I can get up early enough, like we could do some scrambled eggs and try and like, you know, go in that direction. But for the most part, like I've been the most consistent with taking a protein shake. And so I'll do like, I'll do, do the Legion whey protein. I'll do some some milk in there and um, just a little bit of, of peanut butter, uh, which, you know, one time I did a video and I had like a huge amount. Of <laughs> that was a lot of calories, but, and I felt it, but no, what's great about the, the whey protein though, that, that Legion has, it's the only one that doesn't destroy my, my stomach and like make me feel that like, um, you know, rumblings and, and gastrointestinal kind of pressure the rest of the day. So why is that? So, okay. So I agree. Okay. So I, so both you guys feel that same way about the, Legion, I take, I the take, yeah, I use, I, every other way just to kind of, it, it upsets. It's not the way then it's not the it's way. no 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 that's it's not the else way. that's in it i think it's the sweetener really uh, yeah so legion doesn't use artificial sweeteners their sweetener there's a sweetened um naturally with uh i think stevia if i'm oh, not okay. mistaken stevia or monk food huh. or whatever yeah so you know that um aspartame sucralose one of the more common um complaints that people have about those is it messes up their gut so i'm one of those people i could do some sucralose i could do some aspartame but if i push it it messes me up. And there are studies that suggest that they do have an influence on the microbiome of the gut. So hmm. you may be sensitive to those sweeteners. So because it's sweetened um, naturally, hmm. that's got to be what it is because it's way. Interesting. I mean, it's quality way. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's high quality, but you've had other way that messes you up. Yeah. This one doesn't. What this flavor are you using? Uh, so I do the chocolate peanut butter. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like vanilla. I like vanilla because then I can then I can mix it with almost anything. You put berries in yours. I do. Well, it depends. So uh, the last one I just did, which was just two days ago, I did uh, peanut butter and a banana uh, inside it, which is one of my favorite. And then if I do uh, fruit, I'll do like uh, blue. I like a I like a banana blueberry spinach. If you've never had that, that's a bomb mix. Wait, 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 so wait, take wait, take a wait, spinach. Squid. Yes, take two cups of Blends raw spinach. Well, the two cups of raw spinach. Take a, a cup. To a cup so and obviously a half it's of, not for the flavor; it's for the fiber and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, but it tastes bomb. It actually tastes. It's a great way. So Weird. yeah, I mean, we've talked about this before. Like <clears throat> when I one of the the things when I meal prep, I don't prep a lot of veggies because veggies just when you let veggies sit in a, a tub of food for fucking three days and, and then yeah, it's just yeah. gross. So the, the only veggies I get consistently is the dinner that we make at the night at night time that Katrina makes, and I'm getting it in there. Or if I like blend it in my shakes, or I do green juice from mm -hmm. Organifi. Mm -hmm. So I, I try to be aware of that when I'm not getting enough you know, vegetables in my diet, and that's when I'll make that decision to make that smoothie. But it tastes well. Blueberries, banana, and spinach with a vanilla whey goes incredible. Wow. It's a great taste. Okay, I'll yeah. try that. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I used to make that was really gross? That was a shake? <clears throat> you guys don't know? Hmm. I used to blend. Chicken. Chicken. Ugh, oh. I remember trying that. I used to blend. Ugh. What is wrong with you? Chicken and water. God, bro, I was an insecure kid. I just wanted to build. I didn't care. <laughs> By all means necessary. Who did right? that first? Because I did the same thing when I was like in my late teens. I remember to bulk. I was like, I hey, got to get more. And yeah, I remember bro, seeing boil somebody do that. Chicken Whoa. breast. I would boil. I think chicken I put breast. egg raw eggs in there too. And everything. eggs. Yeah. I would do. I did eggs. It's just chicken breast. Lumpy sludge. That's just like. You just you just go. Down your you don't even you don't even try. You just go. Just open your throat and make it go down, <laughs> and don't taste it. It was chicken, eggs, milk, and you ready for this? This gets worse. It's gonna be real bad. Sometimes tuna. tuna. No. Ugh, sometimes. No. You know the irony of that is. You That's know, what I'm trying to you tell know you. It's guys. funny. Like, Nobody's more here. Hardcore. We are. We're like. Ugh. We're like. Ugh, like this. You know, extra 500 calories of like stuff in there. Just. It's like if I would have just taken two days off of the double days, seven days a week gym. I <laughs> had twice the results. Yeah. I, if I, I would have gave better recovery for my body. I wouldn't have had to drink that sludge. If I just my gut worked out been better. properly. I mean, come on. <coughs> yeah, I was just so, dysfunctional. That's so all funny. Yeah, what do you know? Hey, real quick. Do you want to go on vacation? Are you a fitness enthusiast? Check this out. Mind Pump has a rental property in Park City, Utah. Great place to go skiing, hiking, mountain bike riding. But also, this property is outfitted with some of our best partners. So if you like to biohack you like to improve your health and fitness and you want to go on vacation, go check it out. So here's some of the stuff that's in there, right? Red light therapy in the bedrooms, sauna, cold dip, PRX gym in the garage. There's a movie theater, by the way, in this place and more. 
It's amazing. By the way, you also get supplements when you go in there. You get hooked up with some stuff. And it costs the same amount as other places around it. So it's not more expensive. It's a mind pump vacation place. Go check it out. Go to mindpumpparkcity.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Manda AC. What are the best bracing, breathing cues for deadlifts that you've taught clients in the past? Yeah, this is actually a good question because I, I would say squatting and deadlifting, this is probably most important uh, or, you know, bracing and breathing is probably more important for those lifts than other lifts. Now it's not that it's not important for the I'd lifts. Put, I'd put overhead pressing as, as equally. Yeah, over. there you yeah. go. Yeah. Things where you really need to- the lower back. Yeah, where you need to really stabilize your core. So the way I used to teach it as I would tell a client to breathe in, take a, a, a breath in. Now it doesn't have to be a full breath where you can't hold any more you know, air, but breathe in relatively fully, hold your breath, brace your core while you're holding your breath, lift the weight and then bring it back down and then breathe out. Or if this is too hard for you, when you breathe in, brace, as you lift the weight, you slowly breathe the air out through the back of your throat. So it's like this on the way up. So it's like this braced, breathing out. In yoga, they call it, I think, a ujjayi breath, I think is what they say. And then when you come down to the bottom, you put the weight at the bottom, take a couple breaths and lift it. It's easier with a deadlift because you have that pause on the floor. And what that does is stabilizes the core. It helps brace the core. Um, and that breathing in <clears throat> creates internal stability that protects things like your spine. So I think what I would add to that, um, and uh, curious of your guys' experience, this is my own personal experience with getting better at the deadlift. A big part of the bracing and setup uh, and, and keeping brace through the movement for me was actually learning to take all the slack out, right? Slack out of the bar, slack out of my arms, oh, tighten everything. slack mm -hmm. out of my hamstrings, like learning to get all the slack out. Yeah. So everything was rigid and tight. And then the last thing I had to get rigid and tight was to, to brace my core. Because I feel like if you tell someone to brace your core and squeeze your abs or like yeah. pretend like you're going to fart, like they get that kind of, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a funny cue to tell somebody, but you tell them that cue and they try and do it and they, they can I feel that one. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> You've never used that? <laughs> no. Never really? You've actually told your clients no. pretend like you're going to yes. fart. No, I would always like, like Absolutely. pretend to punch them and like yeah. how they would brace, but yeah, I use the, the cues like that. But I, I think my point I'm making though, is if even if you understand how to kind of tighten your core and your abs a little bit and there's slack in the bar slack in your arms no, you gotta get everything's gotta get then tight. like then yeah. what happens is you start to go that little bit of slack comes out and yeah. then you form for, you forget about the core being tight and now you're you're then you you come yeah. you relax and so once i got to a place where i could learn to take the slack out of the bar learn to like get my arms mm -hmm. tight get my hamstrings tight and art loaded already before i even go and then the last cue was to tighten the core and then rip that made a big difference yes. for me with with yeah i would spend i would spend a good amount of time like getting the body full fully tense like that but like in an isometric position first to get them to, to be yes. able to calmly breathe through that but also to some of those cues you mentioned like you know, breathing in through the nose and then exhaling. And I would like pushing it through the teeth. And I don't like, that was always just something that made sense to me. Like as I'm yes. exhaling out. So it's, it's still keeping that tightness there. Uh, and, and you're not giving this like open, um, a relaxing kind of exhale. It's a very much of a, a tense exhale. You know, what I like about this is that you find the importance of this in, uh, different practices. Mm -hmm. Like that martial arts. That, yes. Yeah. I was just going to say, so martial arts through the ki, right? Yeah. And what they're doing with that is they teach you to breathe with a brace core, let out the air, generate more power rather than a, like a floppy breath or just holding your breath, which actually takes away um, from your lift. So if you're doing like a single, um, then holding your breath is okay. But if you're in reps, you probably want to breathe out through the back of the throat. Mm -hmm. But back to what you said, Adam, when you grab the bar, um, and by the way, I, I was helping uh, Max Lugavir with this. So he just started deadlifting. He's always had kind of a back that was a bit iffy. So he's yeah. doing a trap bar and he's been sending me videos on his lifts. And that's the number one thing I had to tell him. I said, Hey, first off, pause at the floor. Mm -hmm. None of this up and down and get tight before you lift the weight. Otherwise what it looked like is he gets ready and his elbows are bent and then he comes up and you get this like pop. Yes. On the way up. Yeah. And I love that. Spend that extra bit to engage the lats. Too. The like lats. Band. Yeah. Because yep. if if then you get even more support that way as well. Now, what's interesting about all the stuff that we're saying <clears throat> is it does two things simultaneously, which is pretty awesome. One, you're stronger. You can lift more weight. Two, it's safer. Yeah. So you're actually stronger. You can lift more and you've reduced your risk of injury. And it's, that's a, a great combination uh, of things that you get from this. Next question is from Droggy12. How do you train around a sprained ankle? 
only train waist up sitting or is it okay to do leg curl or leg extensions? I guess not training the okay leg only so there is no imbalances going on, right? Okay, here's why I like this question. This is one of those things that uh, if you had asked me this 15 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago, my answer would have been completely different. Yeah. And now we have data showing, and it makes sense. Probably lean on safety a lot more. Yeah, well, right? well, now we have data that shows, and if you if you actually look at the data and then think to yourself why this makes sense, it makes plenty of sense. So first off, let me kind of explain the question. First off, the question is, I have a sprained ankle. Should I just train upper body? Or can I just train uh, lower body by using leg curls, leg extension, so I take the ankle out of it? And then the second part is, I should avoid working or strengthening my strong leg, right? Because otherwise I'll create a large imbalance. Okay. So let's answer the first one. Number one, no, you could definitely do leg curls and leg extensions to continue to strengthen the quads and the hamstrings. Plus, although most of the strength and muscle building effect is uh, local, there's also this kind of systemic effect. And the further away you get from the muscle that you train, the less this effect has uh, on other muscles. But the closer muscles have a better effect. So believe it or not, working quads and hams through leg extensions and leg curls will actually also help prevent atrophy in the calves. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now to the second part of the question, should I not exercise the strong leg? In the past, I would have said, yeah, don't strengthen the strong leg. You'll create a larger imbalance. Now we have studies that show that when you have a leg that is injured or an arm that's injured and you work on the opposite arm, that's okay. You actually prevent yeah. atrophy to an extent. Muscle sparing sort of effect. You have a muscle sparing effect on the side that is injured. That's the trippy part. <clears throat> that's the weird part. Now, evolutionarily, this makes sense that you get more atrophy if you did nothing than if you did something. So I now tell people, go ahead and train the strong side. Um, and when your other, first, you're going to have an imbalance no matter what. When, yeah. when, you, when that side is out of the cast or whatever, you're going to have an imbalance. But you're probably going to get out of the imbalance faster by strengthening the whole body, avoiding that side, than just avoiding everything. Or well, because you the thought, side. like, I mean, <clears throat> rationally, you thought, like, there'd be such a, an enormous discrepancy there because of, like, you'd be strengthening that one arm, like, exclusively, uh, not knowing, like, and, and I didn't know that until I saw those studies as well. Like, it, it really do um, produce, like, muscular development and strength on the other arm that you're not even using, which is just trippy. It's weird, yeah. but it makes sense, it right? Does, yeah. It makes sense. I think the only thing I'd add to this is to be to caution the person is, as you come out of the ankle sprain. The mistake that I always made personally, because uh, I've been injured a lot, um, and then come back from that is uh, progressing so fast once I feel better, right? Like, feeling like, Okay, good. My ankle is better. Totally. So now I'm doing the box jumps, the lateral, the lateral ice skaters. They're doing all this stuff like explosive right away mm -hmm. instead of like taking baby steps. Because one of the things that was tough for me as a, a young athlete and like you, you're just so ready to go as soon as you feel better is wanting to jump back right where you kind of left off and doing the kind of tedious like you know, stability training on the ankle a little bit and the rehab kind of work that like that, that all those little details yeah. make a huge difference. And I think in the recovery process and not re-injuring yourself versus going right back into like the same exact, you know what the doing. thought process is? Cause I, I think that's such a good point you made Adam, uh, or you need that you articulated cause I was the same way. Um, I think everybody is, I think the thought process is if they move forward faster, they'll progress faster. They'll yep. get out of, you know, they'll, they'll heal faster. That's not true. When you injure something and it's in a cast, first of all, muscle memory is <clears throat> profoundly powerful and it's a real thing. And for anybody who's ever broken a leg or an arm, you take that cast off and you look at that leg or that arm, like, it looks like it's not yours anymore. The muscle's gone. <clears throat> but even if you don't work it out, you just start walking, you just start moving, the muscle comes back super fast. So muscle memory is a real thing. It, it, was, uh, it wasn't moving, you weren't doing anything with it. It doesn't take much to put the wheels in motion. And in fact, doing too much will actually slow down the process. Oh, yeah. So you're get, better off going slow. And then get you injured again. You know, we see this. It's so crazy how uh, uh, science has evolved, sports science has evolved in just our lifetime alone because I've been playing and then watching basketball most of my life. And we've really got it down to like that science now. Like you'll watch like a, and you always have like a, a person who doesn't know that doesn't understand this. They're like, why does, why does a coach limit their minutes so much? Like they're mm. back. I would just watch them do a three sixty dunk and they're playing. Yeah, he's like, fine. Yeah. He's fine. Yeah, like why point. can't he play the game back? And like, and we've got it down like to the, this, like the math of like, okay, athlete recovered from an ankle sprain. We, we play them 21 minutes for the first game. We're uh, an athlete that can normally play 40 something minutes. 
we limited him to 50 percent of his mm-hmm. his volume yeah. then he gets to you know 75 percent of his volume and it's like we ease them back into that i mean we just went through that with clay thompson clay thompson completely rehabbed for the warriors for an entire year he's back to playing back practice he's playing full games but the coach wouldn't even allow him to play whenever the schedule was back-to-back games yeah. until the end of the now season you can monitor stress and yes. there's all kinds of like handy tools and things plus not to mention a lot of like the rehab like that we've learned in terms of like blood flow restriction and like isometrics and like ways of red actually, light like, therapy red light therapy like a lot of these uh, uh new sort of um techniques and modalities that uh, I didn't know uh, when I played sports, I wish I would have known, but like to be able to kind of take you back to full, even, even better yeah. uh, equipped going back in and stronger. You know, what's so cool about what you guys are saying is that it wasn't that long ago. It was only a couple decades ago where if an athlete had a major injury, everybody's like, he'll never be the same again. Yeah. yeah. And the it was mi- like a death sentence. It was. And it's because they didn't understand what they understand now. Now you have athletes get injured and rarely is it a death sentence. They just m- progress them slower, mm-hmm. but then they eventually come back and they're doing good and it doesn't come, happen as a, it, they don't get re-injured. Whereas in the past, <clears throat> oh, his knee, there goes his knee again. Oh, it's, he's going to hurt his knee. He's got a tendency to hurting that particular knee because they didn't understand this. Yeah. Pretty wild. Next question is from K Pickerel 393. How do I increase protein, but not fat? I have two. Um, th- oh, sorry, Doug. Uh, they're trying to hit their protein goals, but always exceed their fat goals. Uh, sorry. I uh, I just have two thoughts around this right off the bat. like Because this was actually a really common question. I remember clients um, that get, and I, th- and I think this stems from the late 90s. You oh, know? The fear of fat. Yeah, the yeah. fear of fat still. And, and, and I'm guilty of this, even as a trainer and coach, like, you know, prescribing chicken breasts, you know, and, <clears throat> and tilapia, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, we were, we were prescribing these like pure protein, yeah, high protein meats that were super, cause like you get, you only get one gram of fat for every, uh, I think, what is it? How many grams of, uh, uh protein for a chicken breast? <laughs> like it's really, or something like that. yeah, it's really, really low. Uh, and so you could easily do that through chicken breast. You could do that through white fishes. But the truth is, uh, what I found was instead of being so hung up on the additional, say, 20 calories or 30 calories that you get by having a higher fat, maybe food, like it's chicken thighs or salmon instead, was mitigated in the health benefits that you got yeah. from those foods. The healthy fats that what, that came with that protein. Now, do I think you should uh, you add a you know, stick of butter or a bunch more oil maybe into the diet? Like that's not necessary. Or go but, like hyper fatty meats. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Like or like tri tip. Yeah. yeah tri tip. Ha- okay. That's, that's an extreme example, but I'm telling you right now, if you're following your, your, your breakdown of like your macros that you're trying to hit and you need uh say 20 grand, let's say 25 or 30 more grams of protein in your diet. And you're like, man, but I, I don't have enough room for any fat. I need to find, j- so you just go have two scoops of whey protein powder. You've been far better off having, you know, six ounces of chicken thighs and going, you know, 30, and, calories and going 30 to 75 calories yeah. over your calorie intake, eating that whole real food and the, and the benefits that you get from those, those healthy fats. Like I agree with you. Yeah. So, Cause you could go chicken breast, you can go turkey breast, you could go flank steak, you know, these are all you know, tilapia. But I agree with you, Adam. I also think when you're looking at your macros, now you can go hyper fatty meat. So I get that, right? 80% ground beef or whatever, right? I, yeah, I'm glad you pointed that sausage, out. Sausage. Because, because, yeah, you sausage. You could go yeah, like- really, You got 20 grams of protein and you got 20 grams of fat, right? I get that. But you go relative, you know, you go with the other cuts. Like, you know, chicken thighs are delicious. First of all, the, 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 uh, the enjoyment of eating chicken breast versus the enjoyment of eating chicken thighs is night and day. And it's not that much fattier. It's not that much fattier. So- I used to tell clients, I would rather you cut your carbs a little bit so you could eat these protein sources that taste better. Otherwise, you're choking down chicken breast. That's a nightmare. I I would get clients who would eat it with water because it had to like try to swallow it because it was so disgusting. Good luck having a juicy one. It's always so dry. Yeah. Yeah. It's gross. Listen, listen, if you go, this is what I finally figured out with my client. You go 100 to 200 calories over your your calorie target for the day and you do it through- uh, healthy fats and proteins, like through meat, it's not a big deal. You're fine. 
Wow. You're, you're totally. You know fun. when it matters is like your pre-contest when you got to count even, every single calorie. I tell you what, bro, even then, even I, I, I actually threw that out. Really? That. Yeah, I did. That's why I, I used to, I used to mock all the, the, all the bodybuilders I competed with that would like get their tilapia out. And I was still eating fucking ribeyes and still, yeah, <laughs> you guys are crazy. You really think 30 calories is the 30 calorie difference is making a bit Go for a walk. If you really yeah. think it's heavy, have your, go eat have standing. your, yeah, exactly. <laughs> eat it, stand, eat it standing or go for a 10 minute walk right afterwards and then enjoy that food that that and to me especially when you're talking to a client right you're right to a competitor okay maybe that makes some sense when you're trying to cut every calorie you possibly can but i didn't i mean i had there my show i never went tilapia i never went chicken breast all the way up into stage so i always what was your steak your, your red meat source uh, uh prefer uh, preferably ribeyes bison veal uh uh ground beef um, what would you do for ground beef? 90, 95%. Yeah. Especially early on. I mean, again, you like, let's say I'm, 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 I'm like four weeks out from show. I'm, I'm eating ribeyes. Yeah. I'm eating, yeah. I'm eating ground beef with all the fat in it. Yeah. I Plus tripping. I think, like I said, you know, uh, I think it's better to trade a little bit of carbs for that <laughs> because, um, if you need to, yeah, right. Yeah. If you, yeah if you absolutely need to, but what people need to understand is that you could literally every single day for a week, go over by 200 calories on your, on your diet in within, you know, uh, through whole foods. And that is not going to put a pound of fat on you. Mm -mm. It won't, it just, it just won't do that. And I, and some of that we understand, like, this is the problem too, with the whole, you know, uh, the law of thermodynamics conversation all the time, where it's just like, it's just straight. It's, I, I can't figure this out. I've never been able to figure out exactly what it is, but there's something different about, eating whole natural foods that you're, whether it's your, your digestive system agreeing with it better, or there's added benefits that are in the micronutrients that you're it's, getting from it, that. The law of thermodynamics is still real, but, but the, what you're talking about and the reason why it's weird. And the reason why you have people on the other side who make the argument that, you know, calories don't matter, which is also wrong is that the foods that you eat definitely affect the other side of the equation, which is how many calories you burn. Yes. And I think eating whole natural foods leads to a metabolism that tends to burn more. So it's not that thermodynamics throw out the window. That's physics. That, that's always going to exist. But I, I think, and I've witnessed the same thing with myself, Adam. I think it changes the calories outside of the equation. Right. So that's, that's why. It, and it, it, I it, think it, that if you're like from an accuracy standpoint, if I'm uh, taking uh, a chicken, you know, chicken thighs or a cups of rice or a sweet potato and I'm putting it on my scale, I'm weighing it the accuracy of the calories on that is far greater than a protein bar, a protein shake, uh, a packaged lean cuisine meal, yeah. these things FDA that- FDA gives them 20% yes, wiggle they, room. Yes, there's 20% wiggle room. And you have to know that if it's a uh, a product that is that is being marketed as low calorie, low fat, they're going to they're gonna go the other direction. <laughs> yeah. it's, it would behoove them to be 19% inaccurate. It'd yeah. be smart. It's smart business. Yeah. So you bet their ass they're going to go that direction. So you already, you're probably already, if you're eating anything packaged or boxed or, or processed, you're already- already probably under you're already under reporting by 19 to 20 percent every day anyways so instead i would tell a client like you know what eat your eat your steak eat your chicken eat the extra 10 grams yeah of eat your extra 10 grams of, of, of fat or 100 gram 100 calories and eat it through whole foods you're gonna be okay next question is from loki ranzo what do you hope mind pump's legacy will be oh what a great question mm. would you like genghis khan <laughs> we better get started here. I bunch of oh kids. man, uh, I'm ahead, but it's still not that up far. You. I think uh, for me, what I would what I would hope and dream for is that we have taught a generation of people in the fitness space that you can be successful by selling the right ideas by having integrity. That's mm. what I hope. I hope we could prove. <clears throat> That the model doesn't have to be lie, compromise, integrity, false promises, that that's the only way you can become successful. That I hope people look at us and go, hey, they did it the right way. They didn't lie. They maintained their integrity. They told the people the truth. And look, they're successful too. So I'm going to go that route as well because I feel like that'll have far reaching effects in our space. And I, I hope that that sets a standard to where the consumer then is looking for that as well and starts to sniff out what the crap is. That would be my, my dream. Yeah, I wanted to just carry on be, behind that. Beyond um, the four of us assholes. 
Yeah. I just hope that, you know, there's a, a, in 10 to 20 years, whatever it is, who knows, that we can be removed from this, this conversation and the business itself continues on. Mm -hmm. The overall mission of adding so much incredible free content and value, shifting the conversation in the fitness industry. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that mission will ever really change. I think there are always, I think there will always be good information and bad information. Um, I hope that we're a beacon of light in that space forever and beyond all of us. I mean, when we started this, uh, even when you look at like everybody's Instagram handles, stuff like that, it's mind pump, Adam, it's mind pump, Justin, it's my, like, it's the, the brand first. And, you know, we have always said every time we like, we scale this thing and we add more, uh, more things to it. Um, uh, part of the question that we always ask ourselves is, can we remove ourselves from that? And will it continue on without us? And I think we've done a pretty good job so far of, of continuing to build and scale that way. And so, I don't know. I think we're pretty close to a place where we could almost remove ourselves from mm -hmm. the the business and and plug somebody, you know, plug three other dudes uh, or chicks. Actually, chicks would probably make the business explode um, <laughs> yeah. if we did that. So three good looking girls that were spitting the same game. We're I think would actually that. this. We would actually be famous by now if that was the case. <laughs> so, oh yeah, it's so, just got a lot of little controversy there. Yeah, it's a fucking fact. I don't care. Come at come at me. Yeah, I know, I know. So yeah, that's a, I mean, that's mine. It carries on uh, beyond us that we keep it going. I mean, obviously, I think all of us would say secretly a dream would be to see our kids. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, I, I know better than to, to, right. to wish too hard on that because I don't ever want to put too many eggs in that basket. I was, that, I mean, that's where my mind was going to, I'd love to see it impact, you know, even at our own, um, family level, like, you know, our own kids and whatnot. But I really, it's just like leaving that sort of lasting impact, uh, with people and, and two, to be able to reach out to communities that are non-fitness focused. Right. Yeah. I think that's the biggest one for me is really to just, if we can somehow cross over in, into, um, I guess, culturally where uh, it's a conversation that that leads outside of fitness of like, you know, there's there's other ways to look at this. It doesn't have to be so daunting. It doesn't have to be so rigid and, and intense and structured. And it's it's accessible. It's, it's a lot more accessible just to your average person to find their way towards um, – uh, the right way to to approach and, and and handle and better their health and, and feel like they're empowered uh, in that process. I love that because I remember years ago, I saw a statistic. Uh, this is back when I was in the gym industry and they showed um, like the average member and what happens when they quit and if they join another gym and what the deal was. And the, one of the things that blew my mind was that the gym business was, they were just trading members. There was a huge segment of the population that never would go to a gym and never considered signing up for a gym. And then there was a segment of people that join, quit, go to another place, quit, go to another place. And I remember thinking, we're not reaching this huge percentage of the population. Yeah. What are we doing wrong? And then I remember there were companies that come out that kind of tapped into that. I remember that in the late 90s, early 2000s, there was Curves, which exploded, all of a sudden became the top franchise because they kind of tapped into that market. So I love what you said, Justin. I would love for this conversation to move outside of the fitness enthusiasts, the people who love. Oh, I think out. I think yeah. we've already done that. I think that's actually a a big part of the success of the business is that we have been able to. I, I'm not saying that we have reached all those people by any means. In fact, we've probably reached a very small percentage, which is still a massive number. Um, but I mean, that's what when we came into the space. The very obvious thing was that, oh, wow, look at all the, the most popular, famous people in our space. The message that they're communicating is literally they're, they're attracting other fitness enthusiasts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you look at uh, the general pop that are like hardcore into fitness, like that only represents like 5% of the population, mm -hmm. you know, maybe. So, you know, nobody was going after the 95%. And so it was like, oh my God, like we could sit here and get into, like, I don't want to like, I'm not going to fight over the people that want like Lane's content. Like Lane breaks down studies every day. He's got a, a carbon app that is like- yeah, For us, that, we like that shit. Yeah, I like it. I think that's cool for me and stuff like that. But my, none of my clients, I mean, for all the years that we train clients, uh, I can't even think of 1% of them that that appeals to. 
And so I'm like, those are the people that were paying me my entire career. So I, I'm going to go create, I want to create content that appeals to them, that keeps them listening, that makes them share, that makes, helps them out on their journey because the, I think they're, that's a much bigger piece of the pie. And so I think we we're moving in that direction. Obviously we have yeah. a big, big uphill battle. I'll add, I'll add something. I'd, I'd like to inoculate the average consumer against <clears throat> fitness bullshit. That's what I would like. I would like to, to, to get to the point where the average consumer can hear and smell the bullshit uh, right away. When they see the ad, they see somebody say something like, ah, oh, this yeah. is garbage. This is crap. Because if we could do that, then the rest is, I think, going to be easy. Because it's hard. It's hard. It is hard to sift through the crap. Yeah. It is really hard to, dis to decipher what is, there's so much conflicting information, so much politicized science, uh, so much bias that, you know, one guy, one person says it's low carb. This person says it's vegan. This person says it's weights. This person says it's yoga. These people say beast mode. This person says it's fat shaming. It's like, ah, oh, where do I, you know, where do I yeah, go? Where do I like, even go? What's the truth? So uh, if we could just inoculate them against bullshit, I think that would be uh, amazing. What do you think, Doug? Yeah. So I have to agree with everything you're saying. Um, I know, Sal, you're also very uh, passionate about children. Oh, yeah. And I feel like... You know, for us, if we could somehow, in some way, influence children, um, you know, from the time they're going to school and to change their, uh, you know, their relationship with food and exercise. And I don't know what this looks like, but that's kind of a vision I have at some point, being able to tap into that and to be able to make a difference from that level. Because I think what's happening, you know, with our, our challenges with obesity and so on really does start from that. I level. mean, I think we're doing that the right yeah. direction right now. Also, right? Yeah, we have so, to stop saying bad words on the podcast. So no, I see. <laughs> so I, I was, uh, so I was just getting, I got interviewed a couple of days ago and this conversation came up about like talking to your kids mm -hmm. about nutrition. And I gave the analogy of like, everybody's had that friend or family or somebody that, you know, that's like a Bible thumper. They fucking are so annoying, right? They grab the, you know, they're just like telling you why their religion is so good. And mm -hmm. like, and it's like, that is not converting anybody by doing that. And that's the same thing with like fitness and nutrition. Like the, the answer to getting the kids is to getting the parents. Yeah. Is yep. to influence them to make, make fundamental changes in their lives that they become the shining example that's right. for the children. Cause uh, we can give them all the tools and language to say shit to their kids, but if they're not living it, it doesn't mean dick. If they see their parents come home with Jack in the box twice a week, they see them skip workouts all the time. Like they're not going to be inspired to do the same thing, but if they live and they exude health and fitness all the time, it's automatic. It's automatic. Yeah. They don't got to teach it. You ain't got to have the conversation. The food isn't in the house. They see your behaviors mm -hmm. and eventually they grow up and get older. And then they start to see other parents and other people and they see what their parents yeah, are I've like. That is the best way to evangelize 100%. this message to children. Yeah. I've never had success imposing my opinions on health and fitness on family members. Never. I've only ever had success by being the example and then them coming to me. That's right. Mm -hmm. And they'll come to me like, yeah, you got so much energy or man, you look great or what's going on? What are you doing? And then I'll give them a couple tips, yep. but it's never worked the other you way. You gotta be the never. shining example. Yep. That's it. It's, that's why it's just like, to me, it's just like the religion thing. It's so funny to me. It's like, you got people like selling you on why their religion, their God, their way is so amazing. It's like, bro, like if it's that great, why you got to tell me about it? Yeah. You, you should be able to live it. And I go, damn, what do you got that I don't got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the why same. Why are you so happy? What's yeah. yeah. What, what is it you're doing? That's, I want a part of that. And Agreed. that's the same thing for parents with Agreed. their kids. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. Excuse me, Mind Pump Stefano. That's the old one that got canceled. And then you can also find Adam at Mind Pump Adam. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 